In this video, we will give you a quick overview of Infosphere Optum Performance Manager. From the task launcher, we can quickly start a typical task. For example, the first thing that we might want to do is add and configure a database for monitoring. We can start configuring a database by clicking Add and configure a database for monitoring under Getting Started. This link opens the database's dashboard. We can add a connection for a database by clicking the Add icon and filling out our database information. To collect real-time and historical performance data, we will select Real-Time Monitoring and Automatic Data Collection. In the first step of the wizard, we can configure general monitoring settings. Predefined templates help us get started with performance monitoring. Each template is associated with a specific environment, such as online transaction processing, business intelligence, SAP, development, and test. When we select one of the predefined templates, the system collects different kinds of data. For this demo, we will keep the default template. On the Configure Monitoring Profiles page of the wizard, you can change any of the defaults for collecting monitoring data from a database. For example, if we drill down into SQL statements and connections, we might want to set a filter to collect only SQL statements with package names starting with PK. We will remove the filter and keep the defaults. The next two pages show DB2 settings and gives us a summary of the monitoring configuration. Now that the database has been configured for monitoring, we will go to the overview dashboard to get a quick overview of the performance of our database. Because we might have multiple databases configured for monitoring, we need to select a database to connect to. We will connect to this database since we have more collected performance data than the database we configured. In the overview dashboard, the health summary lets us know if there are any system or database problems. If there seems to be a problem, we can drill down by clicking the Go to Health Summary dashboard link to learn more. The Health Summary page shows an overview of all the added databases. We can click an alert to see alert details. Now, let's go back to the Overview dashboard. The Data Server Runtime field shows a time breakdown of System Performance and DB2 Performance. The Data Server Throughput section gives us an idea of the type of SQL statements that are executed more frequently and the average statement response time. The Performance Focus section of the dashboard gives a quick overview of our locking I.O. and SQL processing performance. In the top three SQL statements section, we can view the top three SQL statements by either elapsed time, CPU time, rows read, or lock wait time. We can view performance data in two ways, 
historical and real time. We are currently viewing data in historical mode. A timeline is shown only in historical mode. In the timeline, we can use the time slider to show different data on the dashboard. We can also control the amount of data that is shown on the dashboard by changing the time slider's duration. To display the most current performance data, we would select real-time mode. We can also compare database performance to the performance in a different time by setting a baseline. To set a baseline, first we will move the time slider to a time period that had relatively good performance. And then change none to set. After the baseline is set, we can compare baseline performance to a different time by moving the time slider or switching to real-time mode. The values of the bars that are orange differ from the range of the baseline values. So if we look at one of the orange bars, we can see that the value is either lower than the lowest baseline value or is higher than the highest baseline value. The orange bar means that the value differs from the baseline maximum and minimum value. This warning gives us a good idea if something is too high or too low and can help us notice potential problems. Keep in mind that the orange bar doesn't always mean that a problem exists. From the overview dashboard, we can drill down to find more information. For example, let's take a look at the top three SQL statements. If we want to find more information about these and other statements, we can go directly to the SQL statements dashboard by clicking the go to SQL statements dashboard link. We can also open the SQL statements dashboard by going to the open menu where we find all of the performance dashboards. If the monitor database is a DB2 version 10 fixed pack 2 or higher, the SQL statements dashboard lets us analyze stored procedures. To analyze a stored procedure, we will click show SQL executed by this stored procedure, then we can view each SQL statement that is nested in the stored procedure. If we find problematic statements, we can tune them with Data Studio, which can be downloaded from Developer Works. We can tune a single statement or create a workload and tune all statements. To access some of the tuning features from Data Studio, you will need to apply a license for Infosphere Optum Query Workload Tuner to the database. And that wraps up the overview of Infosphere Optum Performance Manager. Thanks for watching.